Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Two Bearded Losers. I am Eric from Hey Internet. Eric here. And as always, I'm here with my favorite piece of earth scum, my buddy Friends. How you doing, Frenzy? Great. Excellent. Good. Um, we're, it's still spooky season, getting ready for Halloween, and tonight's episode was a Frenzy's choice. These are very few and far you know, <laughs> in between. Uh, tonight, we are discussing 1990s spaced invaders. Uh, Frenzy, any particular reason why you specifically wanted to pick this movie for uh, Halloween time? Yeah, because it's a Halloween movie that mm -hmm. I don't think most people have ever seen. And I just, a couple, I don't know, a year or two ago, I finally saw the Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. And I had totally forgotten about it. Because I have these great memories of seeing this in a theater with my brothers. And I was seven. And, you know, so Dallas was five. And Danny was four. It's a ridiculous movie. Mm -hmm. But it just, um, I forgot completely about it, like what it was about and everything. And then watching it for the first time in 30 years mm -hmm. uh, had this huge impact on me. I think it, it needs a spotlight, a shout out. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. And it is a Halloween movie, like through and through. Yeah, it is. Um, I knew of this movie. Obviously, as a kid, I'd seen the trailer many, many times. And you're right. You know, like you, I totally forgot about it. You know, I, I never, ever th would even think about watching this, especially around Halloween time. And it is a Halloween movie because it takes place on Halloween. Kids in costumes. We'll get into that. Um, and you're right. No one really talks about it unless it's like a select few people like that, that we, that are fans of this show. Like Mel, she loves this movie, but she never talks about it. You know what I mean? She never posts it like on Facebook. She's watching this or, or any of that bullshit. Um, never saw this and I, but I knew the plot. I knew, well, I somewhat knew the plot. I didn't know how much was actually in this film, in this paper thin plot. You, do you want to read the, the plot summary? You, uh, you got it up, pulled up there. Yeah, the here we go. All right off the VHS. They're hip. They're hilarious. Earth will never <laughs> be the same. They're definitely not hip. It's a close encounter of the hilarious kind when five of the universe's coolest alien crash land on planet Earth, piloted by an ultra-hip Martian, the cosmic crew ends up in a sleepy Midwestern town, which is Big Bean, Illinois. Big Bean, Illinois. Jesus Unfortunately, Christ. it's Halloween night, and the citizens mistake these spaced invaders for harmless trick-or-treaters. Instead of the global invasion they planned on, these misguided Martians bungle their way into a series of madcap adventures. Get set for an outrageous blast of intergalactic fun and outlandish special effects in this whacked out comedy adventure. That's basically <laughs> what it is. All right. They might be exaggerating a little bit. A little bit, but I'll, I'll say this. when Before the movie even starts, we get the opening, I guess you would say production company scroll, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, a, it's Touchstone Pictures. And this is definitely a Touchstone Pictures movie. It has that earnest angels in the outfield, not cool enough to be Disney, so let's like give it, <laughs> throw it to Touchstone and have them distribute it type feel to it. It, even though I'd never seen this movie before, it really did make me feel like a kid again. Because we've all seen those three ninjas, you know... Pretty, pretty much anything with fucking Hulk Hogan at that time. You know, that type of, air quotes, lame, family-friendly, fun movie that we, I know I know for a fact, me and you, as a kid, we watched Ad Nauseum. And that already had me with that good feeling going in. The main reason why I enjoyed this film, and I talked to you about this, is I lost my shit. Just watching the credits because I went in blind, didn't read, didn't watch the trailer, didn't read the plot summary, or whatever. I lost my shit when I think he's second billing. Royal Dano is in this movie. Yeah, and I'm sure no one knows who he is other than me and Frenzy. In our generation, I guess he was like a he was big in westerns back in the day. I think mm -hmm. you could tell he's got that that he's got that voice. You could tell that 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 fucker was a cowboy. I know him from, and I love him in every fucking thing I've seen him in, including this movie, because he's always he's always this weird, crazy bumpkin. Yep. This, 
Killer clowns from outer space. He's the guy with 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 the the basset hound or the hound dog, where you know the ship lands and he's the first one kidnapped. Ghoulies too. You know he's the drunk guy who owns the carnival or whatever. House too. He's the fucking grandpa who comes back to life as a zombie cowboy. So that's perfect casting, and he's really fun in this movie too. I knew I was gonna love him, but I'm like, again, that brought back that fun feeling of. Watching these type of, I don't want to say stupid movies, because this isn't a stupid movie, you know what I mean? Yeah. But that type of, and I'll just say that type of movie, it made it brought me back in that era of watching Killer Clowns and, and Ghoulies 2 and House 2, you know, that type of schlock horror, even though this is like a family-friendly sci-fi comedy. Yeah, no, it's okay. You can say it's stupid. It is. It's fine. That's not a, that's not a negative thing. Right. This movie's very stupid. But... Got a lot to unpack there. Don't mind me. Just having some popcorn here. Yep. Yeah, Talk no about movies. Tonight. Yeah, exactly. No, no zaps, zaps we'll for a while. Yeah, we'll, we'll just say that. Zaps are on probation. But I was thinking that the whole time. Okay, before we get to Roll Dano, sure. the whole touchstone thing. This is really not coincidence that it's touchstone and that Ernest is touchstone. Mm. Ernest scared stupid. Mm-hmm. This came out a year before Ernest. This came Scared out... Scared Stupid? Yeah, Scared Stupid came out in 91. Okay. This came out in 90. Very similar, except for this was one-third the budget of Ernest Scared Stupid. Okay. And that kind of ties into the thing I really love about this. And we'll talk about um, Dano, too. Roll mm-hmm. Dano is... To, well, I, I got so much to say, but... No, go ahead, dude. Real Dano in this, like in all the movies we grew up watching him, right? Mm-hmm. He has bit parts for the mo- right. like, you know, he's not the star or whatever. In this, it's like he's in it a lot, mm-hmm. and once he's like the uh, the wheels are tur- turning in this film, and he's like he's got after a certain amount of time. I just saw him as Walter Matthau, like really, yeah. It was like I don't know if that was intentional, like they wanted Walter Matthau, uh huh. Which I don't think because Dano has this this background in horror and these sorts mm-hmm. of like cult films, right? But I couldn't get over it. There was just something in the way when he's acting serious. Mm-hmm. He just reminded me of Walter Matthau or something for for whatever. Re- That's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love Walter Matthau, but I'm choking on popcorn here. The budget has a big deal has a big deal to me is a big deal to mm-hmm. me for this because. And just remind me to bring up Ernest later. Sure. Because that's another big point I want to make. But this movie by Patrick Reed Johnson, this is his first film that he directed. Mm-hmm. And I told you to watch 525-77. Yes. Okay. Just a few days ago, I stumbled across these two trailers. Because I'm, I'm constantly getting updates for new trailers. So I was mm-hmm. like, what the hell is this? Some Star Wars thing. Clicked on that, watched it. At the same time, Steven Spielberg's new trailer dropped for mm-hmm. the Fablemans? Something like that, yeah. Okay, and that one is about, it's autobiographical, obviously. Mm-hmm. That's supposed yeah, to be, I, it's Steven Spielberg's life growing up wanting to be a filmmaker. Yeah, I could tell that right away. And, th- you know, that's like a $100 million Steven Spielberg film. And then I saw five twenty five seventy seven, which is... This guy, uh, Patrick Reed Johnson, the director of Space Invaders, it's a story of his life, and it's a true oh, really? story. Okay. Yeah, I, I read into it because the trailer, the Fablemans looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. It okay. Does. But really this, good. this five twenty five seventy seven really hit me on like struck an emotional chord with me because, mm-hmm. like every other fat loser, that was my dream as a kid. Like, we made movies, me and my brothers. I wanted to be a filmmaker. And then, you know, you just get disillusioned and your dreams go to shit in high school and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I saw this trailer by... It's all just, like, coming together. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. what are the chances... This guy's been trying to make this movie for, like, 20 years, right? To get the special effects done for 525. They drop the trailer. It's finally coming out. They've been making it for 20 years. He has. Mm Mm-hmm. And the whole film is about him wanting to be, you know, the live the American dream and all of these movies he was influenced by. But long story short, I read into it. The, it's a true story. He got to see Star Wars early. 
Okay. Okay. He was like one of the lucky few that got to see the pro- like a special screening of it, and this is the whole movie about that, and then him becoming a filmmaker because of that. Mm-hmm. Star Wars changed his life, and once I connected all these dots, and then rewatched Space Invaders for this. Yeah. Um, it's so evident, and that ties into the the real reason I like this. Long story short, this movie a lot <laughs> is if you're not really paying, if you're not the type of person even as a movie buff that doesn't really care the behind the curtain stuff, mm-hmm. like then I can understand why people will be very bored with this movie. It is too mm-hmm. long. Yeah. It's, it's targeted for children, but if, and I know you like behind the scenes stuff, movie mm-hmm. magic, how things yep. work. I was just like flabbergasted the whole fucking time. It, it didn't matter that there's, there's no move. There's no plot. The characters are stupid. All these things. Because they use every trick in the book mm-hmm. to make this movie. And it's kind of phenomenal that it only costs $3 million. And and I only brought up the the whole time I'm watching this, it has that, that spirit of Ernest Scared Stupid mm-hmm. of these Touchstone movies. Disney mm-hmm. Disney's rejects that they're embarrassed of. Right. And connecting the dots, I'll, sum, I'll, I'll cut to the chase. <laughs> This is a stupid movie, but all this stuff affected me because I realized this kid in five twenty five seventy seven, mm-hmm. his the at the end of his gold brick road, uh, you know, yellow brick road or whatever is Space Invaders. That was his mm-hmm. first foot into movie making, and he went mm-hmm. on to do a. He's not like a Steven Spielberg, right? But he's literally living the dream. Make he, uh, you know, he did Dragon Heart and all in that series. Oh, Same I director. Are you serious? Well, he wrote and directed the first one and then wrote all the other ones. Okay. I got it here. He did... Um, I thought that was Rob Cohen who did Dragonheart, the first one. Well, wait. No, he... Okay, sorry. He wrote all of them. Okay. Okay. He directed Baby's Day Out for John Hughes. Okay. He did Angus. No shit. Directed Angus. And this is a classic Disney made-for-TV movie with um, Christopher Lloyd, When Good Ghouls Go Bad. I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, it, it's a famous TV. He did that too, and just so I can get all this out here, mm-hmm. this will tie back to Two Beer Losers. You won't believe this. One of his other credits, he was the second unit director on Dead Heat. <laughs> Jesus And Christ. he did all of like the, the special effects and mm-hmm. stuff like that, because that you know that's that's all these movies are about cheap special effects. Right. And what's even more fascinating, and then I'm done with this rant. Is that he wrote the song Dead Heat for the soundtrack, too. Which is weird, because he doesn't have any other song credits. So, what I love about this movie is that it's literally some guy's dream come true. And the first step into a pretty decent career. Better than mine. Mm -hmm. And it's this movie's endlessly charming. From start to finish. That, that, that's really true. And... To get to the two trailers real quick, and then we'll get to Space Invaders. Yeah, there's a definite di- different feel. Spielberg's, it's it's you know it's it's kids making movies, but there's a lot of serious shit in that one. You can tell with with the mother and stuff. We're not gonna spoil the trailers. Go watch them. But the one by the Space Invaders guy, that had such a a charming feel to it. You know, it, it it's you know the do it yourself. You know, kids trying to make movies with absolutely no budget. I loved the you know the references to like Planet of the Apes and you know all the other Martian movies that he grew up on the, the, the frustration of like a kid making a movie because there's the scene where hey someone says hey you doing good no I'm not doing good you know that type of stuff because when you're a kid you're trying to make a movie everything will go wrong no matter what and that kind of you know I, I I've helped friends air quotes make movies you know what I mean you know I play you know a zombie in this one that that when you do those with your friends, they're clusterfucks no matter what. Yeah. And that trailer made me kind of feel, you know, warm and fuzzy, you know, whatever, however you want to say it. It made me smile when I watched because I watched that trailer twice. And I'm very excited to see that movie. Spielberg one I know is going to be great, but I'm more excited to see this one. Yeah, it doesn't look good. It does. It looks, it is really well cut. I love the music in it. it, it it's... It's really good. I cannot wait for both of the films, but yeah, 
the fact that that was actually the Space Invaders director. Yeah, well, makes it even more cool. I it think. really, it was really, it's really sad for me to watch it, just because the trailer is kind of sad mm. and beautiful. It kind of, it kind of remember because I know you've said it. I don't know if it is your favorite movie, or but it's one of your all time favorite movies. It kind of rem- reminded me of. Is it called American Movie? Yeah, that's about my number the two one. Hillbillies who try to make make the the horror movie. Yeah, with like his dad stuff like that. That was that's a that's a good one. That documentary. Um, get back to Space Invaders. You're right. This movie does have a lot of charm to it, and not just you know because we're going to always talk about Royal Dano. The kids in this movie are fun. You know me. I've said it offline. Oh, I figured you'd my... hate them. Well, no. Here's the thing. I've said it offline. You assumed I was I was going to hate them. I've said it on my channel. I think I might have said it here. I don't know if you've ever done a movie with, with kids. Um, I did not. I thought Ariana, is it Richards or Richardson? The girl from Jurassic Park. This is one of her early movies. Yeah, she's you know great. I mean? She's really good in this movie. She's tough when she needs to be tough. She's sweet. She, when, you know, there's stuff about her mom dying it's not over the top schmaltzy and sad but it's, it's kind of perfect kind of like you know what we have talked about kids the bad news bears those kids were great mm-hmm. she kind of reminded me at least in that aspect kind of like tatum o'neill like in the scene with walter Matthau. you know when tatum just has she's just she cries a little bit when they have their falling out she's not blubbering none of that stuff yeah it's the emotions are really well done with her i liked the kid who is her new best friend, the kid who was dressed as a duck for half the movie, I thought I was going to hate him because he's dressed up like this really stupid-ass looking duck. He has a little bit of a lisp because, you know, Daffy Duck. But their relationship, I thought, was very cute. You know what I mean? She's new in town. She's sitting on the porch all by herself. He comes to her and he says, like, if you ever need a little brother, you know, just give me a call. That stuff... Could have been really fucking stupid. You know what I mean? But those two kids were really good together. And Ariana uh, Richards, I like because there is a little character, a little robot that the Spaced Invaders have. I don't know if he's... I love it. I don't know if he's like their their, their gopher type of thing or just like their, their slave or whatever. Eventually, he hooks up with her and they, you know, he's riding with her and stuff. The way she treats that, I think, is so sweet. She treats that that robot like it is alive, like it is a person. You know what I mean? And I like, <laughs> I like. It's funny saying this. I like some of the conversations they have because it can't speak, so it communicates with its visor. And she asks a couple questions like, "What's going to happen to us if?" Uh, the, the spaceship can't get into space or some bullshit, and it's just a picture of the Earth going boom. Yeah, you know that stuff is fun. So I was actually really surprised how much I enjoyed the kids. I, I want one of those robot things for real. That's what I was telling my daughter. I said I want one of those things because it's so cool. And I love the design. It reminded me some out of something like of like batteries not included. Oh yeah, it had a total in 1990, but it had a total 80s feel to it. Yeah, definitely a bigger one of those things. Yeah, but I loved it because it roll. It's like a ball. Mm-hmm. That's how it gets around, mm-hmm. like a critter, and then it unfolds into this robot. There's tons of, not just that one, there's another one later on in the film, and just the, even if, like, this is this movie is not for adults, I, I don't think. No, like, not at all. This is for very small children, but it's just one of the many, pra- like, the whole thing's practical. There is no mm-hmm. CGI that didn't exist. Just to know that it's just like a bunch of sweaty dudes in like a warehouse making. Uh-huh. The, the difference between this and Ernest Scared Stupid is that this movie's way more ambitious, like um, aesthetically. Overall, there's so there's so much going on and so many sets and things and models and practical effects. It's overwhelming uh, if you're really paying attention. Like, but I'll just throw this out here now because I. Sure. Because we don't really have a, a lot to talk about in this movie. Right. But, um, I think after I, I watched it again, and all these Ernest vibes, the, especially because it's a touchstone, I just think it's kind of unfortunate that 
these things were made independently by two different groups of talented people. I love all the Ernest movies, especially Scared Stupid. Mm -hmm. John Cherry. Mm -hmm. But I really wish that somehow these two projects would have been combined. And not necessarily Scared Stupid, but I wish that they would have not made this. Right, Touchdown? Mm -hmm. Waited a couple years and did Ernest versus the Space Invaders. Because there's so much awesome shit in this movie that I just Mm -hmm. don't care about because I'm not a seven-year-old anymore. Right. Right? This could have really been, if you had taken, if Patrick E. Johnson had worked with John Cherry and used Ernest, because that's the thing missing in this movie, is you're supposed to love the Martians Mm -hmm. a lot. And the kids and stuff and the townspeople are all asshole losers. Yeah. Um, but there's no central thing to focus on. Right. And, you know, Jim Varney's a powerhouse. I just mm-hmm. think, and the more I thought about it, I was like, yeah, that's, out of all the crap movies they made out, made after whatever the last good one was, this or Goes to Jail? Uh, the last good, well, the, the, I would say the last good one would be Scared Stupid, because after that was Rides Again. Oh, okay. So Jail was, was before was, this one. Rides Again was not Touchstone to my knowledge, I think, and that was his last theatrical. And we're not talking, we're not even going to bring up those straight-to-video ones. Yeah, I don't want to harp on this too much, but you know what I'm saying? Does, mm-hmm. Wouldn't have this been amazing if you took these, the practical effects and all of these things, the bones of this movie, and combined it and made an Ernest versus Space Invaders? And see, here's the thing, you know, if we did this after scared stupid it would everyone would totally buy it Mm -hmm. because Ernest, you have so much fucking leeway in the earnest verse you know what i mean yeah goes to camp is semi-realistic you know what i mean some of the the gags are over the top but you can buy that being in the real world after that he's fucking meeting santa claus and then he's going to jail and surviving electrocution and then of course he's fighting fucking trolls so it would be perfect for him to fucking fight Martians. He would be perfect. Jim Varney and his physical comedy and his ad living and all that shit would be perfect if he was. He should have been. I'm you know not a knock against you know Royal Dano. He could have been Royal Dano, just maybe amped up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, because Roy, Royal's in this movie more than I expected. Yeah. Like you said, he's never a central character. But if he was played by, by Varney, that would have been so much cooler. Imagine him. And the thing is, Royal was kind, Royal's character was kind of childish and cartoonish. Because I love how the how he's going to um he's going to not not the, the police station, but he's going to like the lawyers or something like that. And he's got I think he's gonna shoot the, the lawyer who's going to take his farm. He says he's just going to scare him. Yeah. But, you know, you believe Royal would would do that. I don't see Ernest doing that. But the other stuff is, I see Ernest. Oh, man. Royal has a dog. We got Rimshot the dog from the Ernest verse. Oh, they're going to take our farm. I don't know what to do. You Royal shares a dog biscuit with his dog because they've got no fucking food. Ernest would do that. They literally try to trap the Martians in the barn with a fucking like mouse trap type of of a uh, of a. Uh, I don't know if it is an actual mouse trap or not. Ernest is so fucking dumb. He would use like a giant mouse trap to try to cap- capture a Martian. You know what I mean? Yeah. He kind of did that in Scared Stupid with the the garbage can. You know, you know, troll food inside and stuff like that. So you would see that. So that's a great idea, and I definitely think that would have made some money because Ernest was still semi-popular when that came out if it came out 93 i guarantee i would have gone and seen it in the theaters yeah and it, it would have been a, a step forward instead of a step back with right. rides again and then the right. the downward spiral after that um i just i but i'm not saying that they should have not made scared stupid because it's an absolute classic mm-hmm. and all you know it's everything that's great about that movie the big things about it mm-hmm. is what we're missing in this movie. Because this is, right. you know, uh, the charming special effects and stuff can only go so far. And all these things right. we're talking about. Because, you know, this we're all, I mean, I'm still being positive. It's just, honestly, mm-hmm. it, it is it is too long. And it is. This was like an hour and 48 minutes. It could have been, honestly, 
hour and twenty. You could have yeah. chopped out a lot. Without Ernest, an hour yeah. and twenty. Now, if Ernest yeah. was in this, you could you could cut things and rewrite it. You could make it, you know, hour forty be fine. Whatever yeah. it was, but that's now, just in my head. These are just fantasies. That no, that's a good idea. Now, the main reason, obviously, you know, our main characters aren't the kids. Our main characters are the Space Invaders. And I'm not going to lie, they were a lot more fun overall than I was expecting. Okay? I was expecting, honestly, to be eye-rolling the whole fucking time. When we're first introduced to these fuckers, (laughs) you'll have to help me a little bit. There is like a, a, a war going on in space or something, and their commander is telling them to do this, do that. And there is the main. What, what would you say the villain is? The villain is a protagonist, right? Or an no, antagonist. 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 The main antagonist is this weird, creepy looking droid. Yeah. That flies that. Love the design of that. And there are two scenes in this movie that got me to laugh out loud. The first scene is right at the very beginning. And the droid is trying to tell the space invaders. I love how they look in their in their space helmets. That looks really cool and mm-hmm. off-putting. One of them, like the droid says, go do this, do that. And the one space invader says, absolutely not, basically. So out of nowhere, it literally gets zapped. And in this really cheesy effect, it goes from full uh, garbed up uh, space invader to alien skeleton. Yeah. <laughs> Smoking. And Charred. You get, we- you get the weird shaped head and everything. And it literally just goes whoop, on the ground, and the fucking space invader right next to it goes, "I'll do it," you know, raises his yeah, hand. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, that type of shit is funny. I love that. Kind of like what we said with the monsters, you know, there there are little bits that can get you to laugh out loud. There's another scene, and this scene, I, I shit you not, it's it, you can you guys can think it's lame, it's stupid as fuck. I laughed out loud, and I had to rewind it. <laughs> at least four fucking times my daughter was looking at me because she was in and out with the movie she's 10 so maybe a little bit younger would be like the yeah. like the audience for this but she's like why why do you keep rewinding it why is it so funny eventually because we said they crash land on halloween and uh there is this lady who is taking all the neighborhood kids you know in her car trick-or-treating and I don't know if she just bumps into the Space Invaders or almost runs them over, because I know one does get run over by someone else that we'll, we'll, we'll definitely talk about. Eventually, they all get into the back of her car as well. And uh, Ariana Richards, she says that these are her cousins. Her cousins from California. They're surfers. And literally, one of them just sticks his thumb out and just goes, Dude! The way he said that, the way as fast as he said dude after she said they're fucking from California, it, it sounds retarded. I was laughing and I rewound that fucking thing over and over again no. because it was just so funny. That it, scene, that whole scene is fantastic. Yeah. that That's the funniest scene in the whole movie. What's that act? Do you know the actress's name? The chubby redhead lady? No, but she looked very familiar. She looked like, I could be wrong, to me she looked like... You've seen Gremlins 2 a hundred times. Yes. Right? When the Mogwais, the evil Mogwais are at the, the food bar, she looks like the lady that, that sees Mohawk come out of the M&M's and she says, it's a rat. You know what I mean? She looked like that big red I think that is her. It could be. Um, I'm looking here. Her name's right, Kathy. It's Ariana Richards. Ariana no, Richards. wait, wait, wait. That's, that's, that's not that's right. That's, Sorry, that's yeah. the, the main girl. Not Kathy. I'm reading this thing wrong. I need a real list of cast here. What's the fat? Yeah, it know. should say fat redheaded lady. <laughs> I don't know the character's name, but I think it's the girl. Here we go. Oh, a... Got her. Okay. Patrika Darbo. Right? If you see Gremlins 2, that'll be her. It's got to be. Let's see. Gremlins 2. Yogurt there customer. You Yogurt go. customer. Yeah. Yep. It's a rat. Did she say there are rats? No. Dude, she said there are no rats. She's yep. in the burbs. She's in the burbs? Yep. She's Suzette. She's in tons of shit. In the line wait of fire, minute. Karina, Karina. I have seen, wait, I've seen the Burbs a hundred times. It's my other than Gremlins, it's my favorite Joe Dante movie. Who the fuck is she? And maybe she's someone helping Walter out of the car at the end of the movie or something like. That. No, oh, oh, she's she got to have a line. Okay, maybe she's Art's wife. Because I think remember at the end, Art, your house is on fire and your wife's home, and she's yelling in the background, Art, where are you? 
maybe that trick because I don't remember a really big redheaded chick in that movie. Yeah, doesn't anyway. matter. Yeah, we'll figure it out and get back to you in the next episode. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. But I do love that that lady, obviously, and that was okay. So the Burbs is eighty nine. Gremlins two is Space 90, Invaders is ninety, and then like Gremlins two must have been what a couple months that, later. Yeah, I think Gremlins two is ninety as well. Let's see. It came out two months after this. Okay, yep. Yeah. That scene, though, mm-hmm. she's taking, like, the neighborhood kids trick-or-treating, mm-hmm. and she bumps into them outside the car in the bushes. Okay. Right? I love the way it's written. I love the mm-hmm. deliveries, all of the jokes. It's, like, it's too, it's too good for this movie. It is. And the way that the Marsh, whatever one, the really arrogant one, uh, the one in the... Letterman the jacket, way, yeah. That just wants to kill everyone. Yeah, that's the stuff that I liked, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. It's might be cliche, but anytime he's just screaming out death to humans and wanting them to die, he's like, and the doctor one, you know, the nerdy one is trying to explain. He's like, no, yeah. we're they get this out of the way. They think yeah, we're I, in I, costumes. I wrote it down. We have, we have the guy in the Letterman jacket. The I call him the young punk. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because you can tell he's like he would be a teen. He reminded me. I'm not gonna lie. I think it also had to do with the fact that he had like a weird mask and everything. He kind of reminded me of like one of the garbage pail kids from the live action garbage yes! pail kids movie. He really did. He reminded me of like one of them. You have him. You have. I guess you would call him the scientist because he, of course, he has to be a scientist because he's got some type of space goggles on. And they kind of gave him a faux like German accent, yeah. which I think is hilarious. Then you have the leader who gets separated and he creates his own human robot, which is, that, that was really weird. You have him. You have the angry guy. Wait, the, le- the, the leader is the Jack Nicholson one? No, 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 no. I was going to say there's Jack Nicholson who's the pilot. Pilot, the right. The leader is the one that gets hit by the, uh, the guy that's trying to take the farm. He gets mm-hmm. hit by him and then he ends up getting scraped off the grill and he turns the the geeky gas station attendant into his personal robot slave. That's the leader. Right. You know what I mean? So you got the leader, you got angry guy, because he, he just he's the one that keeps telling everybody, you know, Earth scum die. Yeah. You got German <laughs> you got German scientist, and then you got garbage pail kid and uh, Jack Nicholson. Garbage pail kids, I would be willing to bet money. Not very much. But it seems like the same people that made those puppet things for that movie, mm-hmm. which we we were obsessed with when we were kids. It's not a yeah. good movie. No, I bet it's the same special effects people that did the the designs. I swear to God, there's something so similar to them. It's possible, but but that's definitely the feel. I had. That's not a bad thing. Garbage Pail Kids movie is shit, but you know what? There are parts of it that I do enjoy. I like. Most of the garbage belt kids. In yeah, the movie. I don't care if it's shit because yeah. I I loved it when I was uh, four years old. Right. For real, there's I some, love that there's movie. Some funny shit, and it makes sense because there's some funny shit in garbage pail kids as well. When they get sent to like the the hospital for the ugly and unattractive or something like that, and they fucking have Santa Claus in a fucking cage and stuff like that. That type of writing is fun. I thought these aliens, like I said, were going to be fucking annoying. Especially Garbage Pail Kids, I guess we'll call him. Yeah. Sprinkle it out. He's actually pretty funny. I thought it was pretty... I thought they're all pretty funny. My favorite, I think, has to be the angry one who who just wants to kill everybody. Yeah. You understand why, why Garbage Pail Kid wants to do it because he's, he's a young punk. You know, he's like a high school. He's like 14. You know what I mean? Type of thing. We would. This other guy, the guy dressed in gray, he is just a grumpy... I, he reminds me of like, you know... Clint Eastwood and Grant Torino, but just like not like 90 years old, you know what I mean? He hates yeah. the fucking world. He wants everyone to suffer with him. And he's always willing to to kill people. Like kill earth scum. He says earth scum more than, than the young guy does. I really like, and I don't know why they did it. I like how the pilot is supposed to be Jack Nicholson. With the jacket, I would have thought maybe Fonzie instead, you know, try to be a little bit more cool. Well, it's a mixture. But, the voice is Jack Nicholson because it's so recognizable. Mm-hmm. It's like, why does Jack Nicholson? Why does he just the only person that gets to do that voice? That's true. You know what well, I mean? It's like it's not really his voice anyway. He's playing right. it up. Yeah, him or him or Christian Slater. But 
I really again some of the bits are, are a lot of fun. I like that the whole joke where they send the little robot because they think they they don't know what a road is. So they send the little robot, they think it's a minefield, and he makes it safely across, so then the boss walks and then boom. And this is good attention to detail. He's hit by the by by the car. Car is taken to the gas station. And of course, like I said, it's it's the asshole guy who's trying to take Dano's farm. What I like is of course, he's drinking and driving. He's got his hot bitch on his side. You know what I mean? And he, he, he's going to rip off the kid from the gas. But what I like is the, the gas station attendant, who I, I don't like him when he's, when he's the nerd. You know what I mean? I, he's more fun when he's like the robot slave. But I like how he says, I'm just going to call him asshole. He likes how the, the asshole guy, he says, hey, you got something on, on your car. I think you hit something. So he spits out his beer. You know what I mean? And then they go over, and he literally has, like, a snow shovel to scrape off the alien. Yeah. But, excuse me, the attention to detail that I really like is when the leader space invader gets hit by uh, the car, he's obviously standing up in the middle of the road. So when we see this camera shot of the, uh, the hood of the car, and we're looking at the gas station attendant and the asshole guy, and they got the snow shovel, you can see the antennas of the space invader <laughs> curled over the hood of the car. That's fun attention to detail. You didn't need that. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they're 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 obviously they're they're only as tall as kids, you know, you know, they're midgets or whatever. You didn't need that little attention to detail, but that also kind of fits the the cartoonishness, if that's a real word, of this movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well... And it it made it more fun. It, it it helps make the bit, you know, the joke fun and i loved it yeah that, the, that, that, that little type of stuff the movie hasn't there's an insane attention to detail especially with the design stuff you're talking about the joke stuff mm. and the that's great uh the fucking almost everything in this movie is a model mm. like it's crazy the the amount of effort that went into this for no reason just to try to make a fun kids movie mm. like almost every shot has a matte painting or a, a, or like fake stars behind it mm. just because the shot of the house or something is not that interesting. So mm -hmm. they like matted like real stars behind it and yeah. all the stuff like that. But I like the, when they, when they discover the road, the scene you're talking about, it's more like, you know, they're like in the military, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're like the fuck ups in the Martian military that really, we haven't even talked about this. We got to talk about Orson Welles, but oh, yes, please do. The big thing about that road scene was that when <laughs> he thinks it's a landmine and the yeah. guy orders him, the, the leader orders him to go check it out. And he's like, oh, no, I'm going to die. He's like, I'm going to, what did he say? I'm like going to end up in a body bag. Yeah, something like that. Like, yeah. you know, like they're real soldiers. Mm -hmm. But the thing I, I I loved about this so much is that not he doesn't just say die or scum and things like that. But yeah. he can't wrap his mind around why we, we're not just going to kill them outright. And they keeps like the doctor guy tries to explain. He's like, no, they don't know we're Martians because they're we're in disguise. It's it's Halloween, and he's like, mm -hmm. they're so stupid. Let's just they don't deserve to live. <laughs> the the amount of animosity with this uh -huh. character the whole time, just like just kill them. They're so stupid, and just so happens they land in this little podunk town where everyone is really stupid. Yeah, and uh, so we got to get to Orson Welles. We briefly touched on the, this movie's Halloween movie, but it's right. literally rooted in the Halloween radio broadcast of mm -hmm. War of the Worlds. Everyone knows what that is. Right. There's documentaries and movies made about it, and that's that's another big thing that I loved about this. Not only that this whole movie's an homage to all of these classic um, alien invasion movies, like the Cold War 50s, which are some of my favorites of all time. Right. But tying back to 5, 20, whatever, 77, mm. and that the, whatever his name, the director's passion um, for filmmaking, mm -hmm. we got to talk about the Orson Welles thing. And also, this is kind of, when this movie came out in 1990, this is like right in the middle of a Martian revival in pop culture. I didn't, I didn't tell you about this, but it, it kind of really? is true, right? Yeah, like... Um, two months later, after this movie was released, Total Recall came out, right? Oh, wow, you're right. Mars Attacks is a couple years down the line. We've got mm -hmm. lots of Martian stuff 
just mm -hmm. in the zeitgeist. Starting with probably Toby Hooper's Attack from Mars remake. Invaders from Mars. Yeah. Invaders from Mars when when all of those classic 80s remakes, the more gory, scary ones. Right. I just think that's super fascinating. Like he's this this guy's finally getting to make his dream come true and he's doing it during a martial a Martian like revival thing. Mm -hmm. Um I just wanted to know, do you remember any other Martian movies or doesn't have to be movies, anything Martian from this time period. No. That's what I was I was I was hoping you were gonna throw out examples because honestly the only thing around nineteen ninety that I remember has nothing to do with this and this was you know Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Which again though, but it was another we've discussed that one like two and a half hours, how that is an actual great movie. Not to shit on this one, but it's also, you know, the same time you had it was another kids movie, technically. But it was it was people in suits playing non human characters, you know. You know, Labyrinth came out I, less than a handful of years before that, you know, yeah. stuff like this, you know. Jim Henson. So that was kind of cool to see that this came out the same year as as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, oh well I was gonna bring that up. I, I honestly this is my own conspiracy theory. The reason that um Space Invaders, which cost three million dollars and it made fifteen million dollars in the box office. That's still not bad. No, just for just for instance, uh, just for comparison, Ernest Scared Stupid cost about ten million, nine point six. It only made fifteen million. Cost oh, wow. nine point six, fifteen million. I think the reason for that, not the quality of the films, whatever. No one else will say this, but you brought it up. I was going to bring up Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles, the worldwide phenomena, especially the mm -hmm. film, came out a month before Space Invaders. Okay, mm -hmm. so. You know, the movies, that, that movie stayed out for three months. The right. whole world is going to see Ninja Turtles. And all the hardcore uh, kids and their parents, they've already made them see it after a month. If you didn't right. see Ninja Turtles within the opening week or two weeks, you're a loser. Yeah. Like, no, that's not me saying it. That's just what you're thinking. Yeah, that's that. I, that's how I felt because I was like, I was one of the last kids, at least in my group of friends, to see it in the theaters. Because oh, my no. dad's like, I ain't taking you to that shit. You know what I mean? Well, but, no, that's we'll save that for Dr. Frenzy. But honestly, <laughs> I think the success of Space Invaders is mm -hmm. literal has it really has nothing to do with this movie. It's the timing. Yeah. It came yeah, out Ninja one Turtles. month after Ninja Turtles and mm -hmm. um, you know, parents were like, "Oh, it's another men in suits thing, mm -hmm. very friendly to children. Let's take them to that cuz there's no reason this movie should have made five times more money than Scared Stupid." Right, you know what I'm That's saying. I didn't realize it made that much more mo that much money, and you know that much of a profit. Yeah, you know three times its budget. That's very surprising. I figure, I mean, you know, 1990, 15 million dollars at three million dollars. I consider that not not a blockbuster, but that's a hit. You know, you made back your budget. I guarantee yeah. you, there was hardly any money spent on promotion for this. You got a couple trailers, and that's about it. Maybe a I, handful of commercials. I'm surprised. Like scared, stupid. That's that's not hard to sell that movie. Ernest right. already has a track record. What what are those brothers' name that did Killer Clowns? Uh, the Kyoto Brothers. Kyoto, I can never remember. That. They're absolutely yeah. amazing. That's a no brainer, right? right? This movie, I can't believe it got made. Mm -hmm. Space Invaders, I cannot believe it because even the fact that it was successful, I think all to do with Ninja Turtles and just how charming and literally, unlike Ninja Turtles, which is a classic children's film. That's for all ages. Right. This movie is, this is not a negative thing. Space Invaders is only for, I'd say, three to nine. Nine's kind of three yeah, to like eight I, year olds. Like like I said, my daughter's 10. She sat and watched a little bit of it, and then she would go play. Then she'd come back. Hey, what are the aliens doing? Oh, okay. And she, she watched a couple bits, you know what I mean? Yes. But I think 10 is, you know, under 10 is definitely the cutoff for this. But... You know, you and I, we've, we've done lots of children's shows or children's movies for this podcast. And we're not afraid to admit that because we like no. these type of movies. I'm not going to lie. I was sold on what you explained it to me because we're going to get to the... Well, I'll bring up the Orson Welles thing one more time. Because I liked how they thought they needed to go to Earth because they misinterpreted the rebroadcast of Orson Welles's reading of War of the Worlds as another Martian invasion, and they were going to help the Martians yes. attack Earth. 
and then they realize, oh, wow, we're, we're, we're idiots. We're, they, uh, there are no more Martians. That stuff was fun. Again, these bits, when they first come off the spaceship and they're wearing these weird fucking red, like, garbage bags because they're worried about, like, the bacteria and stuff on Earth. Camouflage, too. Fine. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's what it was. It wasn't the bacteria. It was camouflage because it's red Mars. And then they realize, like, there's all this green stuff, and then they're basically saying, well, you know, we're going to get fucking shot right away. Take these off. There's no point. We stand out. That type of shit is funny. And it was kind of neat because even though my daughter's 10, she got to learn what the, 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 uh, the War of the Worlds broadcast was and how fucking stupid people were back then. Yeah. But then, but then I also explained to her, I said, a lot of people turned into the broadcast late. They didn't hear the beginning yes. of where they say, where, where uh, who is it again? H.G. Wells is the author. Who read it? Is Orson it Welles. Me? Orson Welles. Because in the very beginning of the broadcast, he says he's reading the book. Yes. But people turned into it late. They turned into it during the good stuff. And, of course, they were freaked out by the time it ended because at the end of the broadcast, he says something about it being a, him reading the book. Yeah. This but was no Jesus. accident, though. Like, he knew this was going to happen. He knew oh. that... He right. knew that people were going to tune in late. It's not like it, this is all premeditated, right? Orson Welles is a genius, but she just she she loved that idea because I don't know when he did it. He did it maybe the fifties, thirties. The World of Worlds, yeah. When he did the broadcast, yeah, that was the thirties. That was the thirties, okay? Because I knew the mo the movie came out in the forties, but my daughter thought it was just so amazing. Because remember, ten years old. She lives on the fucking internet. She didn't realize people got their news either from the newspaper. Yeah, it was 38. Okay. Either the newspaper or the radio. That's it. So she thought how neat it was that so many people could get scared by misinterpreting a radio broadcast. No, so it... that kind of that added a little charm to me, like, you know, how she was able to learn about, you know, this is... I don't know what type of history would say. Not movie history, but... Um, pop culture. Pop culture history. Thank you. And that I just thought that was kind of a little neat bit. Yeah, and no, it's the, a I huge the, chunk. I love those three fucking old people on the porch. Oh, I love listening them. Listening to it. I thought that was going to be your favorite part. That It was close. The funniest part. close. Because I love how I, one of them's like, it's like a brother and then a husband and wife. And they're talking about how uh, the wife is picking on... Or they, they could be all family members. I don't know. The woman is picking on the guy in the middle, saying how he was so terrified he put a bucket on his head. He wanted to go join the yeah. army. And he like looks at her, and he's like, aren't you dead yet? You know, yeah. That's the bullshit. Oh, that's no. That's a lot of fun. It's fantastic. Because the, the, when, when he says that line, you have mm -hmm. to look at all their faces. Yeah. It's brilliant. They're all yeah. they're, they're And his brother was making fun of him for falling for the broadcast the first time. Because mm -hmm. in the movie, they're rebroadcasting for the anniversary on Halloween. Yeah. And, no, you're talking about your daughter learning about War of the Worlds and all these things. Well, also, if she was a little bit younger and a little more into this this type of film, mm -hmm. uh, especially, I saw this at the perfect age. <laughs> like, you're right. it, it was just destiny. But I think the, all the homages to these older films, all of these, um, it, it, it leaves questions for children that they're going to want to pursue, and that all leads to great historical and and you know movie um, gold. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. I yeah. I love stuff like this. Yeah. That you to fully grasp the context. If you're an interested child, right? Mm -hmm. You have to watch a lot of movies. Yeah. You know, what I mean, this is a bonding thing. Like I mm -hmm. would, like. I didn't do it directly because of this film, but I would watch War of the Worlds, the 50s one, with my grandpa. I was like, mm -hmm. all these things subconsciously are connecting in your mind. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's just fantastic. I don't, I don't see how anyone, the people that, because I don't like to talk about what other people think, but mm -hmm. this movie was shit on at right. the time. And I just can't believe that none of these paid critics and professionals ever we talk about children's films a lot on this show right children's films and horror they don't ever recognize that the movie's not made for them mm -hmm. this is not made for you for a jaded old right. fat guy who who gets paid to write reviews it's made for three to ten year old children 
Right. Well, it's kind of like what we that's kind of like what we said on on the, the the monsters a couple episodes back. It's not necessarily made for hardcore fans of the monsters, you know, because it's not really a monsters movie yet. It's kind of like a, a, a goofy rom com with the monsters thrown in, and like you said, it makes perfect sense. This movie is not for those type of critics. It's yeah. not for Roger Ebert, Gene, all, the, all the, the big wigs, you know what I mean, how I would say. But one, one more thing to get back to War of the World before uh, I forget, is my do- when my dad passed, he was, a, he was a sucker. He was born he was for these sci-fi movies, you know what I mean? He was born in 51. He grew up watching War of the Worlds, the original Blob, Them, you know, Tarantula. And that's why I love them. They the Earth stood still. Yeah. Oh, he loved the original one. He, that's one of his all-time favorites. Me too. You know? He was like he was such a sci-fi nut. And when he passed, one of the first things I bought to kind of remember him was the Criterion Collection of The War of the Worlds, the one from the 40s. Yeah. I said that my daughter was so enthralled with that movie. She fucking loved it. And then when she found out that War of the Worlds was a book, she loves to read. She actually said she wants to read that when she gets older. It's not for a 10-year-old, you know what I mean? She's got to be, I think, 12, 13. Yeah, that's like a middle school age. book. But I just thought that was cool how she didn't realize it was based off of a book. But now Space Invaders has now influenced my daughter to read. So, so you know what? Fuck you to all the haters. It, it, there is good in this movie, you know what I mean? I just thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. That she now wants to read the book because she loved the movie that dad and, and grandpa loved so much, you know what I mean? And it's mentioned in Space Invaders. So I just thought that was kind of a cool thing to, to throw out there. I just thought... Have you ever watched War of the... I, I'm not trying to correct you, but it's, it's 53. What? The original War of the Worlds. Was it? Okay. Yeah. I, thought it was, I always thought it was the 40s. Because it's one why. of my all-time favorites. I remember when the Criterion Collection... I think you, you sent me a bootleg before I bought it. Yes. Yes, I did. It was a, like a... The transfer is fantastic on that. Mm-hmm. Like it looks like they shot it yesterday. Yeah, I, I bought that the same time I bought because it was, I was doing it for my dad. I bought that with the blob, and the blob oh. is it's a whole other category, but it's still such a fantastic. You didn't? Did you go see it? Thing. You didn't tell me. We didn't. We didn't have a chance. We were so busy. But I'm happy we saw Goonies, and they're going to continue doing this two dollar theater thing. They just showed Halloween, which. I didn't give a shit about it. I don't need to see Halloween on the big screen. This week they're doing Twilight, which who cares? But they're going to keep doing these old movies for the cheap stuff. They, the Goonies was such a success, they did it for a second weekend. No so, shit. Right, it I know. took them long but, enough to figure that out. But they also, like I said, they did Jaws. So I wanted to see the blob. It's just I, I did, just didn't have fucking time. Well, but, get the... Uh... Whatever this one that they're screening, it's some new remaster. It's got to be the Criterion. Yeah, I have that. Yeah, I got that. The Criterion. Have you watched? Have you looked at it yet? Oh yeah, I've watched it. Yeah, it's great. Like, did it? It has to be the same copy, right? It could be. I have no idea. Like it, it's it's mind bogglingly more impressive than the older one. Like the mm-hmm. the image quality. We because yeah. on the big screen, I was like, Jesus Christ, this looks like they made it yesterday. And it was cool because we were getting our tickets and the candy and stuff. And there's in our local theater, there's only three rooms. There's two. On the sides, where you literally walk in, the seats are there. We had to go to the Goonies, so we had to like go down this long hallway. But as I was waiting, they had the doors open, and I could hear the Blobs uh, theme song, which is so fucking fun and stupid. I love it. So it was cool listening to that while uh, producer Rachel and the kid were getting the candy and the soda and stuff. Okay, you want to hear? This is really crazy. Okay. I'm a really big Burt Backrack fan. Okay. I saw him in high school. Mm-hmm. And you know what he opened with? Mm-hmm. His concert, the Blob, because yeah, it was fun. the because it was the first song he ever wrote for for money. Okay, uh, that That's was cool. he was like twenty years old or something. So he he came out, sat down on the piano, and played the Blob. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> he turned around laughing and then introduced himself. He's like, yeah, that's my first song, his first hit. I mean, that's but, that, that's a great way to break the ice. That's for sure. Yeah. I wanted to. I was trying to get specifically. Have you watched War of the Worlds with your daughter? Yeah. Oh, the old one, not the Steven Spielberg. Yeah, that's that's what I was talking about. Oh, I okay. That in for, for I was her, wondering you know. if she liked that. Yeah. She, oh, she. That's the one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She loved it. She sat down. I didn't think she would so much because there are some parts that you know 
the army guys, you know, just talking about what they're going to do. She might not get interested. Yeah. But she sat in the chair, like, and she watched the whole fucking thing. And she's like, that was really good. Oh, that's excellent. So that was really cool. See? This movie, uh, it's kind of remarkable, all these things that are we're getting out of this. And uh, one last thing I want to mention is we mentioned how we're gonna, we're, we started with Royal. I'm going to end with Royal Dano because he, he, he's, he's always, like I said, he's always this lovable bumpkin in some way or another. And he definitely went full Looney Tunes by the end of this movie. Mm-hmm. Because he, again, it's just... <laughs> because the little alien droid, you know, the, the, the bad guy we talked about, <coughs> he's going to kill everybody. So he, Royal acts like he's giving up the space aliens. And Ariana Richards, she's pissed off. Oh, well, yeah, I shouldn't have trusted you, this and that. And um, he, you know, he swears allegiance. And <laughs> he's like, can I have, what does he say something? He's like, I'm going to take your picture or something like that to commemorate the moment. Oh, this is amazing. And it's full on fucking motherfucking Bugs Bunny. Yes. Because he hands him a stick of dynamite. And well, tell him like, why though. So, well, he, Royal has a bunch of dynamite because they can't get the spaceship to get into space. So, like fucking Looney Tunes, he's like, "This is good for taking care of gophers." You know what I mean? Yeah. So they're gonna, you know, put a bunch of dynamite, you know, because he's got fucking crates of this shit because he's crazy old farm. That's man, great. You know what I mean? So they're gonna, you know, put it under the spaceship and literally shoot them into space. But I love how it, it literally. <laughs> He gives the, the, the fucking dynamite to, to the droid. And he's like, oh, we can't see it. Let me light it for you. So, again, he hands him this fucking loaded thing of dynamite. And then he goes and runs and hides. I was just waiting for him to say, like, ain't I a stinker? Or something like that after the fucking droid blew up. No, I'm really glad you brought this up. But I just want to give a little more context for the context for the joke itself. Okay. In that he's a there's, a there's some kind of droid on their ship. Mm-hmm. That's like a security droid. It makes sure they do they do what they're told. Right, he's the one that killed the the, the space invader yes. at the very beginning. Yes. So it's like a built in bad guy robot thing. It's supposed to make sure they're doing. And he's about to die. Right, this mm-hmm. thing's going to kill everyone because it's basically unstoppable. But yeah. over the last few scenes, this droid has this ego. Uh-huh. It talks a lot of shit because it's smarter than everyone else. So like Bugs Bunny. He outwits the robot by saying, right before he dies, like one last request, um, we've got an award for you. That's what it is. Okay. And it's he, he says we have some award for the smartest bad guy or whatever. He's like, yeah. uh, will you That's accept it? And he's like, oh, the robot's like, oh my god, he's <laughs> he's so into he's so egotistical. Uh-huh. He's like, yeah, thank you. And he he goes to give him the award, and he's like, this is it. And then Dano's like, oh, let me light it so you can see it better. That's what the joke is. And it's is. sparkling right. in his hands. And he's like, oh, this is beautiful. And he go, he steps back. This is like one of the best scenes of the whole movie. Uh-huh. He steps back with the camera to take his picture. And what does he say? What's the one-liner? I don't remember. I don't remember. But like I said, I was it, 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 I was surprised it wasn't like, ain't I a stinker? You know what no, I mean? It's, like, like Bugs Bunny it's actually great, though. He says uh, he, he, something like you... What'd you say? And he's like, yeah, you better say your prayers. And then he jumps out of the way. It's something like that, yeah. But, um, yeah, so even, like, stupid little things like that. Right. There's so many of those. But I wanted to get to, before we end this. Sure. You said your favorite scene was the funniest scene. The, the, funny, the two funny scenes that I said was when the droid zaps the alien. And yeah. he turns into the crispy skeleton. Or then when the... Uh, the the other one, hey, these are my cousins from from uh, California. They're surfers, and he goes, "Dude, you know those those were the two ones that that made me laugh out loud." The one I thought would be the funniest to you, it's it's one of the funniest to me, is and I got one more other thing to say about this specific scene. Sure. The town jerk is something I I'm not look I don't have the list pulled up. It's like Clam Decker. Yeah, they always make it fun. like yeah, he's the one that's always like harassing the uh, the gas station attendant. Okay, he's a huge asshole, right? Yeah. He were, um, let me just pull this up real fast. Clem Decker, okay. Okay. The actor is Greg Berger. He's a voice okay. actor. Do you know who he is? No. This ties into Halloween, and this all ties into Two Bearded Losers universe. Very famous voice actor. 
he did the voice of Odie in all the Garfield cartoons. Are you serious? That guy. That guy, all he did was like growl and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, <laughs> he has these other characters that he's done, but oh. he's most famous for that. Wow. Isn't that weird? Why that would is... they pay someone to do that? Hey, but hey, it all ties back in, you know? You're yep. one of your favorite Halloween things is the Garfield special. Yep. Now it's one of mine. I watch mm-hmm. it every year now because of you. Yeah, yeah, because you hadn't seen it at that time, had no, you? No, no. I and that I love Garfield. I just I just happen to never see that. Yeah. Um yeah. that's an every Halloween for me. But make a long story short, I just thought you liked that trivia. Mm-hmm. They go the trick or treaters go to his house, mm-hmm. Clam Decker's house, and they say trick or treat or whatever, and he comes out with a box of cigarettes. And he starts throwing packs into their buckets, and all of them complain. They're like, cigarettes? And he's like, well, never mind. He slams the door on them. I thought that was amazing. What a dick. I would have re- I, I can't remember seeing that scene in the theater, but I would have lost my shit. Like, yeah. what an asshole. To- he's not. He's giving whole packs to kids. Yeah. Like I said, there's a lot of fun. Like, again, when they when they need to steal a car, his, his, his I don't know cars, but his fancy car, the one that he ran over the Space Invader in, is in the garage. And that's what Royal Dano steals. He's like, oh, I have a car. And, you know, it, it's fun seeing him driving that car around and crashing into shit. Long story short, to, to steal something from you that you've said a hundred times in this episode. A lot of long stories. I, you know, we, we, we're going to give our fun factor score. I stand by what I scored it personally. But I still, because you, I always send you my, my little individual groups. A lot of these got a lot of these categories got high scores from me. You know what I mean? Me too. Which 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 was very surprising, and it's well deserved. This is a dumb kids movie, but I had a lot more fun. Ha ha! Wink wink. I mean, that was stupid. I had a lot more fun with this movie than I was expecting. You know what I mean? It it, it was again. It's one of those touchstone movies. Back in the 90s, I'd never fucking seen. I just knew of it from... The only thing, honestly, I remembered about it was the poster when they're in space. And yeah. um, Garbage Pail Kid, you know, he's saying, prepare to die, Earth scum. I'm going to make sure they etch it on your tombstone. Because that's what all my friends were saying. And I did not no fucking idea what they were saying. Like, at that time, that was just like a repeatable line that a lot of the kids on the playground would say. No, you just made me think of something quickly okay. before we wrap this up. Sure. I'm not going to look it up. I, I, I pulled up, I, I had some stuff here to, to talk about. About the Martian movies and things being in the zeitgeist. And the, you know, all these things coming out. There's one, I'm not going to look it up, you look it up. If you're okay. listening to this, you look it up. That was absolutely horrible. At the same period as this, and it was a straight to like VHS movie with Randy Quaid. Okay, and he saw like... The Earth is being invaded by invisible Martians. Yeah, it's a real movie, and the Martians are super fucking annoying. You know the title? No. Should I look it up now? No, no, we'll look it up after. We'll make we'll make them do the work. Yeah, I want you guys to look it up, and maybe we need to revisit. I need to revisit that because I I love Randy Quaid, but the movie was horrible. Yeah, it's one of these like imagine if these Martians were super annoying. They're just dudes painted green. But they're all like comedians. You don't know what I'm talking about? Nope. No, don't look it up. Don't look it up. Just saying, there's a lot of Martian shit at this time period. And with that... Okay. I have no... I'm not going to say what it is. You don't know what that movie is? I have never seen anything about this. I've never heard of anything about this movie. Maybe it's good. I just remember hating it. Oh my god, the... Okay. Because the Martians, they're all painted green stand-up comedians. Oh my god, yeah, And the you... whole movie is them doing there's shtick to him. So, there's so many different VHS covers and posters for this, mm-hmm. and they get worse as I scroll through. But you people at home can do the homework. That was a video store rental. Um, I'm glad all this stuff, I, this brought up so many memories, I'm so yeah. happy. That we talked about this. And I promise you, uh, next time we're doing... what? Next, what what's next week? Uh, next week, uh, we are doing Tales from the Crypt Presents Demon Knight. A perfect Halloween time horror movie, yeah, at least this is, in my opinion. It's a, the complete opposite of this movie. 
yes. in every way. Completely inappropriate in all the best ways. I can't wait to talk about it. But let's let's wrap it up. What's the score we gave Spaced Invaders? All right. Uh, the 100% totally uh, legit screw rotten tomato. Scientific. Fun factor, fun factor score for Spaced Invaders from 1990. It is a 71. It is beer and pizza with friends. And like I said, I was expecting to just kind of roll my eyes a lot at this movie. I had a lot of fun. I, I had a lot more fun than I expected. At the well-deserved 71, in my opinion. Yeah, me too. And I would say Coke and pizza for the kids. Yeah. You might just want to skip the beer and pizza with the bros and right. watch something else. Unless, you know, it, it just happens to work, the timing. I was very surprised by this too because I haven't seen it since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And it, this movie brought nothing but what the kids would say feels. Yeah. Lots of feels with this one. Mm. Lots of nostalgia, warm memories. And just in our conversation, we've unlocked all kinds of crazy yeah. shit. I've already forgot. I'm going to I'm well, actually have to listen back to this one. Well, like I told you, it, it brought back the nostalgic feel for me when I saw it was Touchstone. Because it felt like, okay, it, it's I just got back from the fucking video store. It's Saturday. I'm putting something in the VCR. That's what I like. I said, three ninjas, Ernest, all that type of bullshit. It, it it did make me feel like a kid, at least in the beginning when I saw that you know the the little long blue line that turns into like the the yep. circle and the lightning and in the, the the theme song. So this is a Halloween yeah. movie, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm so excited. Like, just, I don't want to keep bringing up uh, the monsters, but no, you man. you even said so yourself last mm-hmm. week. Or two weeks ago. Yeah. Not really for kids, right? Right. It's kind of sold that it's for children. At least this movie. And the the Defenders are definitely going to say it's a family-friendly movie. I don't think it is. What? The, the monster? I don't think it's family-friendly. Because family uh, implies that the whole family gives a shit. Yeah. And but the, well, the monsters, we didn't really say it in the monsters uh, stream episode. There are some adult jokes in that movie, like we didn't bring up Grandpa's assistant. I don't fucking remember the guy that turns into the bat. You know his assistant yeah. or whatever. He, that's a weird fucking character. But there's some gay jokes with him. You know when he gets the like bottoms up. Oh, that's what the guys used to tell me. You know that type of stuff. So it's not 100 percent family friendly. Right. This I would say. Is. I would say in all honesty, and I said it two weeks ago. It's yeah. not. It's it's not for anyone. I, at least, <laughs> it's for very hardcore. Rob Zombie fans, right? That don't want to see the monsters. That's that's a crazy demographic to try to tackle, mm-hmm. and I appreciate this movie because it knows what it is. Yep. No one will watch this and get upset or be confused. It's for children, mm-hmm. as it should be, as the monsters kind of should have been, mm-hmm. or at least for anyone other than one half of one percent of the population of insane people. I didn't tell you this. You know, we're about ready to wrap this up and do our little ending spiel. I didn't tell you this because I didn't get in the mail in time for this recording. I finished this. Live stream. Not recording. Stream. Whatever. <laughs> oh, who cares? Uh, <laughs> I went online after I finished this. I'm not going to lie. The first time I watched, I, again, movies I have never seen. I watched twice. I had some beer the first time I watched it. I went online. And I don't regret saying this 100% sober. I bought the Space Invaders Blu-ray. Now. Wow. I didn't buy it off of Amazon for $22. <laughs> Kino Lorber is selling it for $7.99. That's a good price. It's a very good price. And I also, like I said, I was a little buzzed. I also bought Gone Fishing for like 5 bucks. That's the, the Danny Joe Pesci. Lover, Joe Pesci. I don't care. That's a fun movie. Kiss yeah, I, lo- I love that one. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, but yeah, this is this movie was worth you know seven ninety nine plus shipping or whatever. And I had fun, and plus I do want to see some of the behind the scenes stuff. I think there's an interview with the director, Ariana Richards. You know she doesn't act anymore. Yeah, but they they have an interview with her. I thought it'd be kind of neat just to see how this movie was made and how some of the people associated with feel because sure it's not going to be like John Leguizamo who like. Super Mario Brothers was the worst time of my life, but let's bring him back for the 30th anniversary and he's going to praise it bullshit. 
I'm sure she has a lot of fun things to say about this film. Definitely. So I just want to throw that out there. Yeah. No, that's great. I, um, I think we've said everything we need to say, and I just want to reemphasize one last time that I'm very excited for Halloween, and I'm also mm-hmm. very excited for five twenty five seventy seven. Everyone, if you're listening to this, you probably don't know what this is. Mm-hmm. I made Eric watch it. Mm-hmm. It all ties into this movie. It's the same director. Everyone, go watch the trailer for five twenty five seventy seven. If you're a Star Wars fan, or if you wanted to make movies when you were a kid, yeah. or just you like, you know, um, good movies. It looks incredible, so I can't wait it for does. that. It looks really good. So with that, um, thank you, everybody watching, everybody who's listening. Um, like I said, uh, next episode, Tales from the Crypt uh, presents Demon Knight. That'll be a fun one for sure. You can find me, Hey Internet Eric here. Just Google that. I'm on all platforms. Two Bitter Losers podcast. We You can find that on YouTube. The live streams will always be on my channel. But we're also on all audio platforms. Rate us, review us, all that stupid bullshit. Frenzy, when, is there anywhere we can find you or anything you want to promote when you're not helping me with the Royal Daniel fan club? No, well, not yet. Coming soon. Yet. All right. Well, lots of fun. This was a good surprise. I'll say this. Great choice, Frenzy. I did not expect us to be talking this fucking long about Space Invaders, and I had a blast doing it. So with that, for myself, for friends, we'll see you in the next one. Nanu. for as long as we did yeah we're talking because we're on an hour 29 right now for the call I honestly I was surprised we were going to get like if we were going to be able to get 45 minutes out of it but no see that's what happens our episodes always